Welcome back to Motoring Box, I'm Sean McKellar and today we're talking quickly about LED bulbs. Now this is one of my favourite car modifications and it's actually the first thing I used to do to my cars back in the day when I was sort of getting into modifying cars because it's something that doesn't take a lot of skill and it's pretty easy, you know, all you have to do is pull your existing bulb, uh, see what type it is and then go onto eBay and find an LED replacement. So we're going to look at a few of these bulbs today and I can recommend a couple of really good ones if you're looking to convert your Falcon or any other car for that matter to LED. So when it comes to the Ford Falcon, in particular the AU and the BA, you can convert pretty much every light on your car to LED if you want to. But as a little warning here at the start, I would probably avoid converting to headlight bulbs because these cars run reflector style headlights and they are designed for an incandescent style bulb. And if you convert them to an LED, it's gonna completely muck up your light pattern output from these headlights. So it will look brighter from where you're sitting, but that's because the light is sort of scattering in ways that the manufacturer was not intending. And you're going to blind people who are driving towards you at night and you'll get flashed all the time and you're just gonna be public enemy number one. So that is something that I'd probably warn you about from the onset. I would probably avoid converting your main headlight, your low beam and your high beams. Just leave them alone. <laughs> Don't be one of those guys. But everything else is up for grabs on these cars. So the interior dome light takes a festoon style fitment. I don't remember the exact model, but I'll put it up on the screen now. So you can jump onto eBay and find some LED versions of those. But pretty much everything else apart from that is a T10 wedge. And this is really where you can have a lot of fun. So your typical T10 incandescent fitment looks a bit like that. It's a bit yellowy, looks a little bit shit. Uh, and back when I was getting into these bulbs back in the day, probably 10 or 15 years ago, the typical LED replacement looked a lot like this. So you can see all your little LED diodes around the sides and you've got this basically tower of five circuit boards um, that have all sort of been glued and soldered together. And the thing about it is they are notoriously unreliable. So if you have a look at this one, it's flashing because <laughs> There's a loose connection or the diode is dying or the board is dying or whatever. Um, if you've ever seen a car driving along the road and one of their lights is just going crazy, it's an LED and it's bound to be one of those. So these are a really terrible thing. Two of these are not even lighting up. So if you're looking for an LED replacement, I would avoid anything like that. Uh, similarly, this is another one that's basically got twice the amount of diodes on it. That's a different color temperature. That one's a bit brighter as well. I've just blinded myself looking at that. Um, but yeah, again, I'd probably avoid them just because they are a little bit unreliable. So if you want to replace your T10 incandescent bulb, I've got two really good options here. The first one, uh, which I'll call bulb A in the video description below, is a sort of silica sealed LED bulb and it's got two sort of diodes in there, but it is totally encased in silica and I wouldn't go so far as to say it's waterproof, but seems to be really well sealed. So if we plug this one in and have a look at it, if, you don't, if it doesn't work the first time, just spin it around and plug it in the other way. You can see it is a lot brighter, a lot whiter, and that comes down to your color temperature. So your typical incandescent bulb, I think has a color range or a color temperature of around 3000, whereas this one would be more like probably 6000 Kelvin. And that's just a color temperature reading, but that's just something to think about. 6000 is going to be very pure white, but verging on a little bit of a blue tinge. So that's bulb A, the silica one. Again, there'll be a link in the description below, but these are really awesome bulbs. I've never had any of these fail or start flickering. So that's the first one. The second one is this kind of blade and there's a single LED on each side. But this one, I actually prefer this one because the color temperature is ever so slightly warmer. I would say it's probably 5,000 K. So the 6,000 K, I'll put them in beside it so you can see them both together. So you can see the difference there. This one's a little bit colder, a little bit sort of bluer. Um, the light does look a little bit more like a pure white, but when it's in the lens, it sort of looks a little bit bluey. So I go for this one. So around a 5,000 K gives you a really nice sort of solid white light. There's no sort of color tinge towards the warm or the cold. It's just sort of bang in the middle. So again, this will be called bulb B in the video description. 
So if you want to purchase one of those, click on the link there for that. But again, these have been extremely reliable and look, it's all just on the single, on the one blade, you know, there's not really anything that can go wrong with these. As long as you're using them some way that's fairly waterproof, you're not going to have any problems with those. And uh, also for your indicator bulbs, if you want to replace the ones on your front guards on the side, you can actually replace them and not affect the sort of flashing speed of your indicator. So if you do the ones in the headlight and the taillight as well, you're going to get hyper flash and the indicators are going to flash at like twice or three times the speed that they're meant to. But you can easily do the one on the front guard and not affect anything. So bulb C, this is a really nice warm, I think it's like a 2500K bulb. But if you look at the color temperature here on your indicator bulb, it does look very orange, but that's just because it has like an orange film on the bulb glass itself. But if we plug this one in, it is very similar. So you can just pop these straight in and they'll function properly. And one last note, if you actually do want to go ahead and replace your main indicator bulb on your headlight and your taillight, you can do it, but to avoid hyper flashing, you need to go and buy some resistors. Uh, I'm not going to link to any of these because you need to find a particular one depending on the wattage rating of your bulb. So this bulb here is a 21 watt. This is actually a 50 watt resistor. So you need to find a resistor which is going to match the bulb you're replacing because if you put an LED replacement into your indicators, the resistance on these bulbs is a lot different and the power and the circuitry is going to be running at like twice or three times the speed. And a resistor, which you need to sort of put one on each corner of the vehicle basically. Wherever you've got an indicator bulb, you need to put this into the positive and the negative wiring of that bulb. And it'll sort of put or add additional resistance to that circuitry and bring the speed right back down to the flashing speed they're meant to be. So I'm not an expert on any of this, but I do know that the installation gets rather messy. And if you're not an expert, I wouldn't do it yourself. So if you want to play it safe, I would probably avoid that and just go for the safe options. Your parker bulbs, your interior bulbs, your license plate bulbs. But uh, a lot of these T10 wedge bulbs, like especially the A and B that we looked at before, these are awesome for your car interior. So if you're doing like the footwear lights or the boot license plate lights or things like that, these are really awesome options. And I just wanted to film this video mainly to explain like, hey, there are tons. If you go on eBay and look up a T10 LED, there are thousands of options out there. But I've bought so many of them over the years that almost all of them are just terrible products. And I've even had some that threatened to catch on fire. You plug them in and they just started smoking. So you got to really be careful with what you're buying. But if you go for either A or B for your bright white, LEDs or C in the link description below for your indicator, you cannot go wrong. These LEDs are absolutely awesome. You can get them pretty cheap in a pack of 10 or so. As I mentioned as well, these are particular polarity. So if they don't turn on the right way the first time, just spin them around 180 degrees. So that one actually works both ways. Look at that. Hmm. <laughs> But yeah, most of the other ones are um, polarity specific. So if you plug them in the wrong way, they won't work. Spin them around, they will work. So yeah, that's it guys. I really hope this helped. LED bulbs can really modernize your car and for not a lot of effort. So anyone can do this. And uh, another awesome thing about them is they tend to last a long time. If you get a really good quality bulb, like what I've recommended here, they will easily outlast incandescent bulbs, probably by 10 times the amount of lifespan. So it is a bit of an investment in your car. It's gonna be an investment as well into how good your car looks on the road. And uh, it just adds a bit of extra freshness. Instead of everything being yellow, it can be nice and bright and white. So that's it guys. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll be happy to help. Otherwise, see you next time.